The eastern coast of Australia is home to four large coastal dune fields. These include the Stradbrook Islands, Morton Island, the Kalula Peninsula, and Gari. And Gari is the topic of today's video. This island just might be the most fascinating island in all of Australia. And it is also extremely important for the ecosystem of Australia as well. So in today's video, let's cover the formation of Gari and some interesting features that lie on the island. So Gari, or Fraser Island as it used to be called, is the world's largest sand island. And almost the entirety of this island is comprised of sand. Even if it may not look like it at the start, this is just a heavily forested sandy island. So the actual island of Gari started forming around 700,000 years ago. And it formed through the process of longshore drift. So longshore drift is how sand moves along a coastline, or along the shore. And it appears in areas where the waves come at the shore at an angle. And this causes the sand to be moved up at that angle, and then back down into the water, creating a zigzag pattern along the coast. But this process is very slow, and that's not the primary way the sand moves. The main way the sand moves long distances along the coast is through the longshore current. So when the waves move the sand into the ocean, they get picked up by a current that is moving along the shoreline and get moved many miles up the coastline. And so here's a map of the longshore currents along this eastern coast of Australia. And as you can see, it is moving sand from the south far north around to where Gari is today. But this is what longshore drift looks like now that these islands are here. Before these islands were here, the longshore drift would have followed closer to the coastline, and in the case of where Gari is, it most likely would have bent around the coastline like this. And as these currents were following along the coastline, they reached some feature that made them slow down and deposit the sand they were carrying. And the reason that the longshore current slowed down when it reached Gari is because Gari actually lies on a bedrock of volcanic rocks. Some of these volcanic rocks actually make outcroppings in the northeastern section of Gari specifically at Indian Head, Champagne Pools, and Wadi Point. And the volcanoes that created these rocks formed around 23 million years ago, although there are some sections of the outcroppings that date to 170 million years ago. And the ways that these volcanoes formed were from hot spots. And if you didn't know, hot spots are essentially a region of the Earth's mantle that is hotter, and thus it is able to break through weaknesses in the crust of continents. So these hotspots are all known as the East Australia hotspots, and they progressively get younger as you move south because the Australian continent was moving north over where the hotspots were. The specific hotspot that formed the volcanoes of Gari is the Comboin hotspot in the middle here. As you can see, this green square here represents the volcanism of Gari, which formed the rocks that we can see there today. And so these volcanic rocks on the surface and below the surface caused the sand from the longshore drift to be deposited and formed the basis for Gari. Now, the first place that the sand was deposited was in the northeast here by the rocky outcroppings. But the island quickly expanded outwards. And here's just a map showing the ages of the sand on Gari. And today, the oldest sand we can observe on the surface is to the west of the island, However, this is just because the eastern portions keep being overlaid by new sand. So those are the processes for how Gari formed. But as I mentioned previously, Gari is the world's largest sand island. So how was there this much sand in the longshore current that caused Gari to form? So the primary sand that goes into Gari travels hundreds of miles up the coastline, and they mainly come from rivers in New South Wales, specifically the Clarence River, Hunter River, and Hawkesbury River. So what is the reason that these rivers, hundreds of miles away from Gari, are the primary source of the sediment? Well, these two rivers, the Hunter and Hawkesbury River, flow from the Hunter region of the Great Dividing Range. And the Great Dividing Range is just the mountain range that goes up the entire eastern coast of Australia. And while the Great Dividing Range was formed in an orogeny when two different tectonic plates collided, in this Hunter region of the Great Dividing Range, there was a lot of volcanism as well. 
As you can see on this map, there were many volcanoes that formed in the region we are looking at. And so these mountains have gotten greatly eroded away by the rivers that flow through it, and because they're so close to shore, most of the sediment from these mountains end up in the ocean. And also, because most of the sand is coming from these volcanoes, it gives the sand on Gari a very unique property. The sand on Gari is actually extremely silica, or the sand is made out of quartz. It is estimated that 98% of the sand on Gari is quartz sand, and this just gives the sand a lighter color than you would normally see. But rivers are by no means the only way that sediment has gotten into the ocean to form Gari. Another major way that this occurred is through fluctuating sea levels during the previous glaciations. So as Gari was forming, we were in the Pleistocene, or more commonly known as the Ice Age. And as you probably know, this was a period of multiple glaciations that greatly fluctuated the sea level. Specifically, since Gari has been forming, there have been seven different glaciations, and this fluctuated the sea levels as much as 120 meters. And so not only would this 120 meter rise in sea levels greatly erode the mountains and bring the sand into the ocean, but it also built the dunes on Gari much higher. The highest point on Gari stands at a staggering 244 meters which is a crazy amount of built up sand on this island. But that is how Gari has formed. But there are still a few topics I want to touch on about Gari. As I said, it is probably the most interesting island in Australia. The first one may be a very surprising fact, because without Gari, we might not have the entirety of the Great Barrier Reef. You see, most of the conditions for the Great Barrier Reef to form were there long before Gari formed. Specifically, the main condition here was warm water and shallow waters. However, during this time, the Great Barrier Reef did not form. So why is that? Well, it is likely because the area that the Great Barrier Reef would have lied on top of kept getting new deposits of sand which would either which would either not allow coral to grow, or if it did grow, smother the coral in sand. But of course, when Gari formed, it diverted much of the longshore drift sediment that would have gotten into the Great Barrier Reef area further out into the ocean, and either grew Gari or caused the sediments to go further out into the ocean. So without Gari, the world's largest sand island, we most likely wouldn't have the world's largest reef system. And the ecosystem of this eastern coast of Australia would look much more different than it does today. So along with Gari having a very interesting geology or formation, it also has a very interesting geomorphology or very interesting landforms. So immediately when you look at the island of Gari, you will probably notice these weird white splotches on the island. And if you zoom in more, you can obviously tell that these are sand dunes that aren't vegetated, despite the area around it being heavily vegetated. Well, these features are known as sand blows. And just like what their name suggests, they are a huge area of sand that has been blown uphill. And going back to our sand age map, you can see that these sand blows represent the youngest out of any of the dunes on the island. And so this is why these dunes aren't vegetated, there just simply hasn't been enough time for the plants to have grown in this area. Another interesting geomorphological feature on Gari are its lakes. And there are actually three different types of lakes on Gari. The first kind is the most common and forms many of the lakes we see on its surface, including the largest lake, Lake Bumanjin. And these lakes are what are known as perched lakes. And perched lakes form in valleys between the dunes where sand has been cemented with clay. So in this diagram, what is known as coffee rock is essentially a sand and clay mixture that acts as a hard surface for these lakes to stay on. And then, through a combination of rain and runoff, these valleys fill up into the perched lakes we see today. The next type of lake is much more uncommon, and these are known as barrage lakes. The main barrage lake on Gari is Lake Wabi, and a barrage lake forms essentially where a stream or river is naturally dammed. In fact, a barrage is a type of artificial dam. However, in this case, all barrage lakes are natural. So in the case of Lake Wabi, there was likely a stream which was flowing from the higher dunes up here down to the beach, 
But this stream then got damned by one of these sand blows. And this sand blow created a deep lake that is today Lake Wabi. In fact, Lake Wabi is the deepest lake on Gari, coming out to be 11.4 meters deep at its deepest point. The final type of lake on Gari is known as a window lake, and the most prominent one of these is this tiny lake here known as Basin Lake. These lakes form in a very similar way to the perched lakes that we talked about before. However, the way it gets filled with water in this case is from the water table, or the depth where the ground is saturated because of an aquifer. So it's called a window lake because it essentially acts as a place where we can see the level of the water table. But that is all of Gari that I am going to cover in this video. There are still many more interesting landforms on Gari, such as the sand spits north of the island, or sand cliffs along the coast, but if I talked about all of them, this video would be much longer. So if you learned something new, please subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.